Good morning. I'm excited to try this El Grullo for breakfast. You can see it's just under a pound. It's about nine tenths of a pound. And it's really stunning. Look at that. So it's a Hylocerius ocamponis variety that originated in El Grullo, which is in Jalisco State, Mexico. My favorite thing about it are the purplish kind of bracts. Very, very beautiful. And this variety of dragon fruit, you can see that it is really, really heat and cold tolerant. It does pretty well in Southern California. Although the last heat wave, it did get a little bit of chlorosis. See that yellowing down there? But this thing is tough. So I'm excited to try this fruit. It's been described as a beet-like flavor, which I'm not that excited for. You can see this is where the fruit was on the sun, the sunny side, so it's not quite as bright or colorful, I guess you could say, as this side. Uh, what else can I say? Also, it's described as being pretty tasty. Brixing at about, I want to say an 18. So, wow, what a beautiful dark red fruit, as people describe. The seeds look pretty small. Smaller than I expected them, I'll say. Wow, what a gorgeous fruit. Let's look at this half. Very beautiful. All right, let's try it out. Let's see how it tastes. Now, beet flavor sounds kind of gross for dragon fruit. But let's see. Mmm. Now, it's definitely firmer. The flesh is definitely firmer tasting than other varieties, I'll say that. Hmm. It's really, it's really sweet though, sorry. <laughs> wow. Yeah, what I definitely notice is that the texture of the fruit is more dense. It's um, heavier, I guess you could say. So it's not as... Uh, watery but it does not taste like a beet to me but the texture I can see kind of tastes like a boiled beet texture wise taste dragon fruit I like this a lot I remember the best way to kind of see the color of the flesh is from the juices so you can see it's really really dark reddish purple very beautiful Okay, let's see how it bricks us. Now, I'll be honest with you, this is not my favorite dragon fruit. It's great, really great, but I've had better and I've had worse. But this one just is not quite, I wish it was a little lighter and juicier, I guess you could say. I bet you it stains really well too, look at that. It has a beautiful color juice. This thing would probably be an awesome fruit juice, dragon fruit, to really pop, get some color popping in your food. El Grullo is probably gonna do it for you. All right, I'm gonna guess it's gonna bricks at about a 16. That's my prediction here. So let's see. 17 and a half or so. So a little bit higher than I thought. So wow. I really like this fruit. I have one plant in, well, I should say one trellis with three cuttings. And honestly, that's about enough for me with this variety. It is good, but it's not my favorite. Today I'm gonna taste American Beauty. Now this is a variety of Hylocerius guatemalensis. And what's special about it is it's a purple or reddish fuchsia colored flesh and it also is self-fertile so that is one huge plus it, the fruit will be a half pound to one pound in size and here's what the plant looks like so here's a cutting from the same plant where i got this fruit you can see it's very mature now in my experience american beauty can be a little frost tolerant and sensitive to full sun 
So in Southern California, I recommend growing them with a little bit of afternoon shade. And this fruit is also, I did want to mention that the fruit is also very similar to Bin Hoi Red. But people say it is a little different in size. So let's go ahead and give this one a shot. I'm gonna try the larger of the two. They tend to be sweeter. And today I'll cut it this way. Get out of here, ant. Oh man, it's gross. All right. All right, as you can see, look at that beautiful color flesh. American Beauty. So really beautiful purple. I don't know if it quite shows up the same in the uh, in to the human eye, I guess you could say, as on camera. To the human eye, it's more purple. It's a bit more vibrant in purple color. Let's see if I can get closer for you. Okay, so let's give it a taste. It's really juicy, you can see. And definitely a different flavor than some of the reds that I've had, the Nicaraguan varieties. These Guatemalensis varieties tend to be a bit sweeter and a little juicier in my opinion. You can see all the juice. And a bit more tart berry flavored, which is really, really enjoyable. I really like this fruit a lot. Mm. American Beauty is really a great fruit. But again, it's, it's more purple. I'll show you some footage of it in the full sunlight so you can get a better understanding of what I'm trying to show you color wise. So we'll see if it looks better in the sun versus the shade. Mm. I like to drink that juice up. It's my favorite part. Okay. So again, if you only want to grow one variety of dragon fruit, this could be a great one for you because again, it is self fertile but it isn't as cold or heat tolerant as some of the other varieties. Okay, let's give this a bricks. Now, they can get larger, up to a pound, and maybe a little bit larger than a pound. And this one's a little bit smaller, so it may not bricks as high as it could if the fruit was larger. But it is definitely ripe and very, very enjoyable. And this is bricksing at a 17 which is respectable, but again, I bet you could get 18 or 19 with a really large and happy, uh, ha a large fruit with a very happy plant. Mm, it's wonderful. Highly recommend American Beauty. Now, in addition, what I like about it is you can see it is kind of a round ball shape, softball or baseball. And what's unique about it are the bracts will stay green and the skin will be red. So it'll kind of fade red to green, just like that. And that's when it's ripe. So American Beauty, it's a really great dragon fruit. And as far as I know, this came from Paul Thompson's collection. So I'm not sure if he named American Beauty. I haven't found much information on that, but it's a great fruit regardless. So if you know anything about it, please give us a comment. Wow, what a stunning fruit. My buddy Ricardo sent this and this is Bruni and it's amazing. I am blown away by the complexity of its flavors. It's very different than anything I've experienced. It kind of has a floral hint in a good way. So let's cut this one and show you kind of what I just had to experience firsthand. So this is Bruni. It's a Hyloceres denopterus crossed with a Hyloceres undatus, which is a white fleshed dragon fruit. And the Stenopterus produces a reddish kind of flower burgundy. It's really beautiful. So this was hybridized by a German hybridizer named Eckhart Meier. And I, I Meier, I believe it's actually pronounced in German. And he's created three, there's three siblings, or three total. There's Connie Meier, Kathy Von Arum, and Bruni. And this is Bruni. And wow, it's a very, very stunning little dragon fruit. They tend to be smaller in size, but they the flavor packs a punch. A lot of people describe it as a coconut, and I had to taste it firsthand. I didn't want to have my first experience on film. I just kind of wanted to think about the flavors and what I know about plants and how 
just the complexity and uniqueness of this variety is just amazing. It's very, I, I wanna say it's almost coconut, it's floral to me. So here it goes. Mm. The bigger one I tried first had a little bit more coconut vibe. This one's a bit more mellow. And um, maybe a slight kind of, I almost want to say lemon or rose-ish, but in a really good way. Wow, this is a really good complex white fleshed fruit. Mmm. Now I'll scrape the rest of this not on film. You guys aren't watching. So please don't think I'm gonna just leave it that way. But I think I wanna brix it for you. Now these canned bricks really high in the 20s, but I don't think this one is quite up there yet. It's extremely flavorful and balanced and unique. I don't have a spoon handy, so I'll have to do it this way. Hope this works. But wow, I really, really, really like it. It's an amazing hybrid. Well done, sir. Definitely got some. And I got a better look at it. It's actually about 17.3. Awesome. 17.3. And the other one was at about a 16. This one was at about a 16. So could be um, need a little bit more time on the vine, but honestly, I would eat it this way. I think this is perfect. I don't like things that are overly sweet. So that's why I was a little intimidated by this with that hive of bricks. But to me, this is a, a lovely white flesh fruit. I, I, I think it's the best white fleshed variety dragon fruit I've been able to eat so far. This variety is called K and is grown by my friend Danny. Now he worked with Gerard Kislau, who hybridized, who hybridized this fruit before he passed. And so, if I had to guess, it looks like it could maybe be a Seabar Lisa crossed with a Sugar Dragon pollen. I'm not sure. I mean, I can't, don't quote me on that, but it's just what my observations are because this is unknown. And the fruit for the second season now, I've seen the fruit on the mother plant, and it stays about a pound or less. So, I find it very interesting. I think it's a beautiful little fruit. And I think the, hopefully it's gonna get bigger next season as the plant matures. So let me go show you my cutting that is one year old. So here's my K right here. And Danny gave it to me 11 months ago. You can see, I would say it's a pretty quick grower. It's growing about six to seven feet this season. And the new growth is really, kind of has a nice, that nice powdery protective layer on it which is great for the Southern California sun. That's so intense, but it does turn olive green as it matures, as you can see down here. So it's a really th pretty thick and spiny plant. And I like it. So let's go taste the fruit. All right, so let's cut the larger of the two. and it looks a lot like what we tasted yesterday. Now, you can see that it is a darker red color and it does have some nice kind of larger seeds on there. But I think it's a beautiful little fruit. So let's taste it. Kind of like raspberries, blackberries, and strawberries mixed together. It's excellent, I really like it. Not too earthy. Actually, very mild finish. And this is really, really great fruit. I like it a lot. Now, it's probably a bit on the tart side, maybe because of the growing conditions and full sun. 
to me because it's a younger plant. Let's check the bricks out anyways and see. All right. Got a seed in there. Uh-oh. So it looks about a 16 on this one. So that's definitely on the lower side, I bet. Hopefully it could jump up a little higher in the future in time. But this is really enjoyable. I really like this fruit, even though it's small. So kind of really perfect for the home gardener. And just to compare, I want to cut open the sugar dragon and see if I taste any similarities in the flavor. Here's a little sugar dragon. You know, back to back, I they're both really great, but there's a kind of a earthier finish, earthier taste in sugar dragon on the finish where this K has a more pleasant finish. I definitely, back to back, I prefer this one. I know people are gonna hate on that, but that's just my honest opinion. There's something about this that's just very, very berry about it. So, wow. Good job, Gerard Caslau. All right, so here's this tiny little Armando. And you can see it's ripe, beautiful reddish, kind of purplish flesh. It's a good color. And it definitely is small, but to me, it looks ready to eat. So let's try some. One of the world's smallest fruit. Unreal. All right, there we go. It's actually kind of bland. Is it? Yeah, it tastes like a needs more flavor. Maybe it just didn't have enough size to produce enough sugar. Nah, yeah, it's very low sugar. So I bet I, it will sweeten up in time, but I hope all our Armandos do not taste man. like this, to be honest <laughs> is it with that, you. It's that uh, one sweet. Dude, huh? you try it. Take I a bite. Try it. All right, let's try this. Yeah, I think um, maybe because of the size of the plant, it couldn't generate enough sugar. Yeah, that's we what did, I would guess. Or maybe we need to leave it a little longer. I don't know. Yeah, but it's getting cold this time of year, so yeah. it's a very late season. All right. Take a bite. Yeah. It's just flavorless. I mean, it's it's got the dragon fruit texture. Yeah. Well, definitely, we still get some health benefits, wasn't great. right? Yeah, but, you know, off of a 20-foot or 20-inch uh, <laughs> cutting, you know, that's definitely... That's quite a feat. Probably not, not enough energy. So yes, definitely a little disappointment on the taste. Yeah, it but... still make a good smoothie. Oh, it would definitely, and you still get the health benefits of dragon fruit. That's true. All the antioxidants and but the fiber. I would give that a very low rating as far as taste. I'd give it like a five, man. What would you give it? I'd probably give it a two. Two. Two uh, out of ten. All right, let's say like a three. It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, it just tasted like it just tasted healthy. Like yeah. A, Tastes like, like plant. Like all the, if you took all the, like the healthy part of the dragon fruit and none of the good part, just kind of have that. Like it just tastes like a, like a, almost like eating like a beet or something, you know? It's like just all, all that. <laughs> very, very but, flat. And I'm really excited to try this under half a pound dragon fruit. This variety is Axe. Now you can see the beautiful cutting that I got yesterday when I visited the plants and did some swapping. So I accidentally cut this fruit and it looks to be really, really ripe. I was just trying to take a cutting and whoops, now I have this lovely, lovely plant. Well, fruit, I should say. Now the story behind this in summary, and I'll put a link in, I'll pin it so you can see, uh, read the comments yourself. But the basic summary is that Edgar Valdivia created Asunta as we know and Axe comes from one of those seedlings. 
Now, what happened is Edgar Valdivia gave Gray Martin three different seedlings, and in time, Gray grew them out, and Axe was one of them, or ended up being one of them, that produces a purple flower, and his wife gave some cuttings to a neighbor, who ended up sharing them, I think against Gray's will. I'm not sure of that part of the story, but it did end up getting spread to Three Lucky Mountains, and now we have Axe as a known variety. Now Axe really means Asunta for A, and the X is unknown pollen source. So off the bat right there, it's starting to look like it is the correct variety, and I'm really excited to taste this fruit. It's beautiful. Reminds me a bit of physical graffiti, the color. But the seeds are a little bit larger, I want to say. Wow. Beautiful little fruit. Now they can get well over a pound. So let's try this little guy. Right, let's get some juice. And today I'm actually, no, I don't want to think it's like too sweet, but I'm just going to try the juice first. But let me try a little bit. Wow. Very unique flavor. Very sweet. I like this a lot. Let's see. The brick score. From the center of the fruit and it's a little bit above 19 wow that's delicious it has a nice amount of juice too. the profile definitely much much different than physical graffiti Reminds me a bit of a Pelora, the sweetness. Wow. Now I've had a Sunta 4, and this is definitely different than that, but similar. What an amazing fruit. So I know that Gray Martin was pretty bummed about this variety getting out to the public, but to me, in my humble opinion, I'm very glad it did. This is a delicious fruit. Now, I'm, they say that it's sweetest right in the center. So let's give that a shot. Seeds are crunchier. That's about the only negative thing I could think about with this variety, but what an enjoyable fruit. Wow. Thank you, Edgar Valdivia. Thank you, Gray Martin. Thank you, the neighbor. And thank you, Mr. Martin's wife. This is, this is an amazing dragon fruit variety. I hope that you can taste this someday. Hey everybody, this is Paul, and today I'm gonna to talk about Nicaraguan red dragon fruit. So I found these at our local Sprouts, and I was hoping I could find something to graft. You can see the spine there. But I don't think I'll be able to get it. Also, I'll try. But also, interesting note, um, it seems like they put a little sealant on it. See it there? It's kind of like a weird little crust. So I don't know if it's wax, but that's what they do in Nicaragua, apparently. And I noticed it on this end as well. Maybe like they cut this and it healed over too. I'm not sure, but it looks like they use a little bit different farming strategies there to get it shipped here safely. But see, there's some type of sealant on it. But either way, I think it's going to be a tasty fruit. And they did kind of cut it off there early, see? And it healed over. And there's some of that sealant there as well. So either way, this Nicaraguan dragon fruit should be really tasty. So let's see which one should I have. 
I think I'll go with this one. Okay, let's do it. All right, really dark red, beautiful. Really nice fruit that definitely its qualities there. I don't think it's as nice as Gray Martins. Of course, it's come from Nicaragua, but it is a beautiful red flesh. So let's see what it tastes like. Very, very red, very beet-like. Better than I expected. We do have a Nicaraguan red dragon fruit variety, so I wonder if the fruit will look just like this next year. I expect to get fruit next year. Let's see. Mmm. Really good. Um, sweetness isn't up there. But it's got a nice kind of berry vibe to it. Berry and kiwi. Seeds are mild and pleasant. A little bit crunchy. And not very earthy. So man, I'd give this probably 8 out of a 10. It's a great variety. Probably could have gone on a bit longer on the plant. It would have been a little sweeter. But overall, I would say great fruit. Really nice. Very enjoyable. Red dragon fruit. Product of Nicaragua. So I thought that this Trisha cutting was going to flower this year and fruit but instead one of the newest ones that I got from a really old plant flowered and fruited instead in fact it didn't even have roots at the time and it had four flower buds one aborted and I plucked off the others to promote growth on just one so I wanted to see what would happen and here we are so this is day 42 and I'm gonna end its misery. You can see how loose it is. And I really want this plant to develop some uh, branch growth. And I know that this is not gonna be a very tasty fruit, but let's go try it out anyways. Also, this is not the correct way to pick up dragon fruit. I'm gonna show you a really cool method when the Laverne Red is ripe. But uh, let's do it and you can just twist and pull. It's very simple if it's ripe enough. But again, that is not a preferable uh, method in my opinion just one way to do okay so what a beautiful little fruit I find it extremely stunning wow the colors this was created by Edgar Valdivia and named in honor of one of his daughters wow it's very beautiful but this is a poor representation of his fruit so I'm not going to Brexit or anything in front of you. I just want to see, did it pre create viable seeds? And yes, it did. Surely it did. Look at that. What a beautiful color. It's about the size of a sugar dragon. And wow. I like the color a lot. It's definitely a bit more ruby kind of purple in there if you can see that more so than what you see visually in other words it's it's definitely a darker purple than what the camera is relaying to you it's more there's a bit of fuchsia in there it's not it's not red I see I see fuchsia in there so wow see it you can see it on the on the blade usually on the blades a good indicator of the actual color of the fruit more than the camera all right so I think I need to definitely taste a little bit but I expect it to be bland because that poor cutting had way too much on its plate not enough energy not enough carbohydrates to turn into sugar Wow, I'm wrong. It's actually really sweet. I'll bricks it for you guys. Hmm, wow. It's very complex. Holy burritos. This thing's awesome. I did not expect that. 
So it's definitely, it has a lot of complex kind of berry earthiness in a very pleasant way. But again, this is a poor representation of the fruit. So I cross-pollinated Trisha with Laverne Red, and I'm really interested to see what these seedlings look like because they're gonna be crosses of crosses of crosses, basically. It's the easiest way I could explain it because Trisha is a hybrid and Laverne Red is a hybrid. So these are just for personal use. I wanna really just understand how these plants hybridize and I wanna see that firsthand. Now, I can't believe that that little cutting was able to produce such a sweet fruit. So I'm very excited to wait another year or two for this plant to mature and produce a, a fruit worthy of um, analysis, I guess you could say. But I am gonna give it a quick bricks. So let's see what that looks like. Wish I had the digital one, but we're on a budget here. Let's see if I can get a little more. That should work. So it's at a 16, which is quite a feat. I'll take a picture of it and put it in the video, but it breaks at a 16, and that was from a three-month-old cutting of Trisha. So wow, amazing. Let me go show you this plant in the sunlight so you could appreciate it more. Here it is in the sun. What a stunning, stunning fruit. Hey everybody, this is Paul, and I'm really excited to try this little San Ignacio dragon fruit. You can see it's about 204 grams, so that's a little less than half a pound. So they will get larger. Here's a sugar dragon. Here's a nice hybrid that I get to try soon. Kind of see some similarities and some differences. And then American Beauty. So you can see there's definitely some differences in these varieties. And with this one, I was actually able to get some of the plant. So very mature cutting that was getting quite a bit of sun. And then I also got a smaller cutting. So you can see the difference. All right, so I'm really excited to try this. The grower said it tasted like strawberry. So let's see what it tastes like. I cut it this way today. So it's dark red. You can see the fruit looks a little damaged, so maybe it's a little overripe. I prefer it when it doesn't have all that. But I'll still eat it. Now you can see that the UCNR says that it will bricks at a 15.6 and it's decent to heat and cold. It will take full sun. And they did say it has good commercial potential. And they had fruit uh, larger than this, another 152 grams or so. And their bricks was a 15.6. So let's see what this one bricks is at today. It's a really beautiful dark red flesh. Wow. That's a very, very pleasant berry vibe. Wow. Different than Lisa. Not earthy at all in the finish. It's really clean finish. The aftertaste is very pleasant. Let me get another bite of this and really kind of think about what it tastes like. It is kind of my, like a mild strawberry. Not raspberry-ish. It's definitely like a sweeter berry and less tart. Very enjoyable despite that it is kind of a little bit overripe in my opinion or it's a little gelatinous. Wow. That's really, really good. I'm glad I have this plant. It's a Nicaraguan variety. And I believe it was brought up. I'm not sure on this, but I believe it came from 
UC Irvine. Okay. I would guess it's maybe about a 16, but wow, very, very pleasant. It's about a 14, a little over 14, but to me, I would have guessed it to be higher. It's really, really an enjoyable fruit. San Ignacio. Seeds are a little crunchy, but wow, this is definitely one of my top fruits this season, no joke. Even though Brix is at under a 15. So will Brix a little higher. Beautiful red flesh fruit. All right, San Ignacio. Check it out, I've never seen this brand before, Dragonberry. So I looked into it and they're actually a produce company based out of Canby, Oregon. So they've been around since 2004 and they mostly sold apples and Pacific Northwest produce, like garlic and onions and things like that. But I think they've expanded because now they're sourcing white flesh dragon fruit from Ecuador. But notice it's not the pelora, it's not a yellow skin. So I hope it's not bland, uh, like, and no offense to the Vietnamese fruit that I've had that has been shipped here to California. It, had, it hasn't been very flavorful. So I really want to get some nice white flavored, fleshed, uh, yellow or salmon skinned dragon fruit. I want to try a really sweet one. So I'm hoping this is going to be it. So I could not find any information on Ecuador dragon fruit other than Pelora, which is a yellow skin, which is different. So let's see how this one tastes. Let's see how does Ecuador create what type, I should say, of white flesh dragon fruit. So Hylocereus undatus. Let's see. All right, very pretty. Wow, it's not, hasn't been, uh, in the fr freezer for too long, refrigerator has been gotten cold shocked. I mean, that's a stunning fruit. That's beautiful. I would give it in, in appeal and in looks, I would give it a 10 out of 10. I mean, it just looks beautiful. I mean, even all the, um, the fins were just still very, very fresh and healthy. It seems like this was picked off the plant yesterday from my yard, but it wasn't. Okay, so let's see how it tastes. I'm gonna try the spoon method today. Wow, I'd have to say that's really good. Definitely tastes um, a little mild, but very pleasant. The, the seeds are very, um, they're not earthy at all. They're very slightly crunchy, but very, very pleasant. Wow, I really like this dragon fruit. I would like it to be a bit more sweet. I don't have a Brix refractometer, but I would estimate it Probably in the 16 to 18s. Mm. But very delightful. Wow. Um, it, compared to the Vietnamese white dragon fruit I tasted a few months back, I would say this one tastes much better. This one has much more, I don't know, it's kind of like a mild melon, faint kiwi vibe. It's, it's, it's a great fruit. Wow. Good job, Ecuador. Mm. Now, I think I would probably give it a six or a seven out of dragon fruit I've tasted because I, I know that I can find a sweeter white fleshed dragon fruit. It almost tastes like it could be on the plant for another week. I think it, or two it would have been a bit more sweeter in my humble opinion. But, you know, if you're finding dragon fruit in May in Southern California, in the grocery store, to me that's always a win. Now, I, if you have the option between this Ecuador white fleshed and salmon skin, looks like a Vietnamese white, um, versus a yellow pelora, go with the pelora. The seeds are bigger, and in my opinion, they're a bit more earthy and crunchier and more noticeable, where these are not but it's definitely much sweeter than this variety. But again, wonderful fruit, nice and healthy, 
Good job, Dragonberry. Wow, I'm just amazed that Laverne Pink, this little plant, produced such a large fruit. Look at that. So this is my Laverne Pink. I know that because I tried a fruit the other day and it was pink, even though this was labeled with everything from the nursery as a Laverne Red. So it's a bummer with the dragon fruit. But anyways, I applied this stuff. I What I really did actually is I top dressed this with my soil mixture, which is Happy Frog, Fox Farms Happy Frog, pumice, perlite, a bit of vermiculite, and coconut coir. So I squeezed in as much of that, of that potting soil into the root bound pot as I could. And then what I did is I applied earthworm castings every week, right here, and tea. So I did those two in combination into this two pound pot and the fruit, the flowers opened a few days later after I started and it set fruit. Changed a beautiful color as well too. It looks much he healthier. So anyways, this little plant, I, I did take one cutting, I must admit, I did take a cutting and gave it to a friend. So it's one cutting short, uh, but this little guy produced this lovely fruit. And let's see how sweet it is. Well, first we should probably weigh it, huh? So I got this on Amazon the other day. I'll, I'll put a link in there. It seems like a good product, but I must tell you that the batteries were dead when it arrived. So I had to go take some from the TV controller. All right, 1.39, it's hard to see that there. All right, what is that in grams? 630 grams. Okay, I probably would have let it sit a little bit longer on the plant, but you could see it started to get some moisture damage, it looks like, it's from our foggy evenings. We've had a lot of humidity. So, all right, let's cut this open and let's see how sweet it is. So I can't believe this Laverne Pink was mislabeled as a Laverne Red, but that happens more often than you think. And so check this out. Uh, this is the website and you can see that they have a few mistakes. It looks like their labels are Photoshopped, the colors. And I don't think that this is a Hyloceris Undatus. It looks like an Undatus Hyloceris Cross. So definitely more of a hybrid. And let's get to work. Okay, I am super excited. This is like officially the first fruit that is a full size that we've grown in the year into this journey on our channel. It hasn't even been a year yet. And look at that, our new plant turned out to be a Laverne pink. It's definitely not white flesh. I see a pink tone. And the plant doesn't look undatus either, as you already saw. So wow, what a stunning fruit. And I tasted the little one. It was really delicious, really balanced. So let's see how the big fruit tastes. Now remember, it's going to be sweetest, sweet, Swedish. It's going to be sweetest right in the center here. And as you get near to the rind or the skin, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be more tangy. In other words, the sweetness will be higher in the center and lower if you were to bricks them. In fact, it's about five points difference, believe it or not. Okay, so here goes. Now notice the seeds are really kind of smaller than maybe Trisha that you saw us taste the other day. And it's very, very beautiful, fine texture. This is a commercial quality fruit, I would say. Mm. It's definitely sweet, tangy, smooth, soft, lovely. I really like pink flesh dragon fruit varieties. They don't kind of get enough love in the community in my opinion, but wow, that is great. I'm gonna try some more. I should show it to you, huh? Getting a little bit too excited. Look at that. Lovely, lovely fruit. Mm. This is really sweet, and I'm glad I picked it when I did. All right, let's see the official bricks. That will always tell the tale. So again, right from the center, and the best thing, or the easiest way I can do it, is I kind of spoon it, eat it, of course, and then 
a little bit of, you can see, uh, it kind of fills up like a little well or something. So you get that liquid out. Uh-oh. There we go. And let's see what it says. So, believe it or not, it's at a 21 and a half. Wow. Never underestimate the power of earthworm castings, people. 21 and a half. I'll show that to you in a second. I'm going to leave that right there, and I'll do a clip. It's a little over 21 for sure. So, wow. Laverne Pink. You can bricks at a 21 in a two-gallon pot using earthworm castings. I think I'm going to start growing my plants in smaller pots. I think 20 gallons is too large if, if I'm able to do this. But again, think about it in the long term. What's this plant going to look like in a few years? And what's it going to be able to produce in the future? So wow, this is over 20 on the bricks. I am impressed. Hey everybody, this is Paul and it's January. And I just found this at my local market here. This is uh, looks like physical graffiti and uh, the salmon color is not quite there because of the winter uh, ripening dragon fruit don't quite get the same color in southern california when they're ripe in the winter and this season was really late so anyways this is physical graffiti it looks traditionally like that as you can see and uh, this is a uh, 1s seedling by paul thompson so this is uh one of his seedlings lots of people call it pink flesh i kind of call it purple so I'm, you kind of can decide what you think, but to me it looks more on the purple side of things than like a delight, um, which would be a different Paul Thompson seedling. So this is Physical Graffiti, named after the Led Zeppelin album, and um, it's a beautiful dragon fruit. And it's got a mild acidity, a lot of people compare it to a kiwi, um, which I would agree with. Um, but what I like about it is the seeds are really, really pleasant and um, it's just really a well-balanced dragon fruit. So let's see how it tastes. Yep, excellent. Um, they can be up into uh, the 18s for brick scores. I don't have a bricks tester, but this is definitely on the sweeter side of dragon fruit. And it's really, really wonderful. Um, it's really, the texture is really firm. And the seeds are incredibly mild, slightly crunchy. But what I like about it is that um, these seeds don't have any of that earthiness to them. So to me, this is one of my favorite dragon fruits to eat. Um, it does require to be cross-pollinated, so that could be a drawback. Sorry about that. So that could be a drawback about this uh, variety growing it is you need pollen from another variety, like a sugar dragon or Vietnamese white but it's worth it. Um, man, I, I would have to say this is probably a eight out of 10, this one right here, and it just tastes wonderful. I could eat this whole thing right now. So anyways, I'm, this most likely came from uh, Elk Creek Dragon Fruit out in Fallbrook by Linda Nickerson. I uh, talked to her a couple weeks ago and said she was gonna sell some to Major Market. That's where I bought this. So definitely a wonderful fruit. It went for I think six ninety nine a pound or five ninety nine a pound. I can't remember, but uh, they were wonderful. I bought two of them. One was about a pound and a half, really big. And then this one you could see was about three quarters to. Nah, I'd probably say it was about a pound. So definitely a beautiful variety, really tasty, and one of my favorite to eat. So this is physical graffiti, a Paul Thompson seedling, and it requires cross pollination. Uh, but it's definitely worth the effort. Hey everybody, this is Paul, and today I have my two favorite dragon fruit I'd like to do a little taste test on and compare and contrast. So on the left here is a sugar dragon, and on the right is a, um, a Pelora, or an Ecuador yellow Pelora uh, dragon fruit, and they are wonderful. So, starting out with a sugar dragon, the S8 Paul Thompson seedling, you can see it's a winter crop, but definitely, oh no, bummer. I'll wash that and eat it later. But it's a winter crop, and you can see it's a beautiful fuchsia color. 
So this is a small one. It's at the end of February and it's not at its best, but the seeds are small and it's a very pleasant uh, tasting dragon fruit, in my opinion. So let's see how it tastes in the middle of winter. There it is, sugar dragon. And it's great. So what I like about it is that the seeds are really mild and pleasant and they're not earthy at all. And this is definitely really sweet. Some people call it a candy dragon. So the winter fruit are not as good as summer fruit. However, in Ecuador, where these are grown, these are sweet all the time. So the way I like to eat this, I like to cut the ends like so. And then cut it into fourths, which I did a bad job. Okay. So, right off the bat, you can see it has much bigger seeds. So it's a white flesh, but it's extremely sweet. It breaks scores in the low 20s, I think 20 to 22. And uh, the only bummer is the seeds are kind of more earthy and kind of taste a little bit of, I guess, for lack of a better word, kind of dirt. Tastes like dirt. Mm. So much sweeter though. Now I like the seeds. I think they're enjoyable. And I think crossing these two would be awesome. I mean it'd be a really cool mix to cross these two and make some hybrid. So what makes this so unique or sweet in my opinion is that it's a yellow megalanthus and it has spines on it and they have to be brushed off and so this also stays on the vine for about 180 days compared to a sugar dragon which would stay on the vine in the summer for about I don't know late 30 to 40 42 days or so and uh, in the winter here this one was uh, the flower had been uh, pollinated on Christmas so it sat for about 60 days and it's it's really sweet it's wonderful I'd give it a 8 or 7 out of 10, but this one I give a 9 or a 10 out of 10. So definitely the yellow pelora is an amazing fruit. Really enjoyable. It's really easy to propagate from seed. The last one I found, I grew about uh, two dozen seedlings and I have some currently grafted to rootstock. And these seeds were extremely extremely easy to propagate. You just want to kind of clean off as much flesh as you can, put them on a piece of toilet paper, and then into some high quality soil. Now also you can see this one started to sprout. So that's another uh, common feature with yellow dragon fruit is that the seeds will start to sprout. I don't know if you saw the little sprout starting to form on there, but it's there. So anyways, you can see the difference between these two wonderful dragon fruit and they're both extremely sweet but this is the sweetest dragon fruit that I've ever tasted and they continue to never disappoint me when I find them in the stores I always buy a few hey everybody this is Paul and I usually don't do this but I wanted to try the Vietnamese white dragon fruit from Vietnam so I hear that it can taste kind of bland I've heard other people say it can taste kind of sweet and since I just finished Paul Thompson's Pattaya book, I can tell you some more about it. So anyways, here is one of our versions of Vietnamese white. And it has not fruited or flowered yet, but it does take on the cold growth fine. We had frost last week, I did not cover it. You can see that new growth is still going to shoot, still growing every day. So in addition, I did notice um, from Paul Thompson's book that he says that he had collected nine different types of Vietnamese white and the variation can, uh, was very different. Sometimes he questioned if they were self-fertile, other times he noticed there was very different shapes and, and the fruit could be either uh, pure beautiful white and really uh, sweet or bland, or it could even be kind of an opaque off-white color. So anyways, he mentioned that uh, for 100 years ago, the French, 100 years ago, the French imported self-fertile dragon fruit to Vietnam. And now there's a huge market they create 
a lot of it and push it out. I got mine at our local Vons. So $5.99 a pound I think I paid. So here's a Vietnamese white. It's also known as Vietnamese Jaina. So that one is one version of Vietnamese white that I have. Also Paul Thompson mentions Alice Snow as a different one from Spring Valley. You can see it definitely looks different than the other ones I've shown you so far. These are all Hilo series Undantas. So they must be different hybrids over time or cross-pollination or seedlings. Many factors could be the reason to explain why they're so different. Now here's something interesting. Paul Thompson mentions some dragon fruit from Ensenada area. And this one, I've been growing under a grow light this winter. It's getting huge. So you can see that growth. It's called K55, I called it, because that's the region where somebody got it from for me. So anyways, it's really thick and it got so plump, it actually split. So it just really wants to grow. It's very robust. It has lots of new buds that I'm plucking off constantly because I want it to have vertical growth. So definitely looks different when you compare the two. Look at that. Although dragon fruit can change a lot over time and depending on their conditions. In addition, here's a white Undantus that Sal gave me. It's really thick. Huge cutting, you can see. And again, he said it was a nice sweet white flesh, if I recall, and definitely looks different than the other dragon fruit varieties I've shown you. So anyways, white dragon fruit, Hylocerius Undantus, according to Paul Thompson. And the book that I read about it is that there's just a whole lot of variation. Let's go ahead, let's open this one up and see what it tastes like. Hopefully it's gonna taste great. Again, I bought this fresh yesterday at our local Vons, $5.99 a pound, and it looks like it's straight from Vietnam. All right, let's go pop it open. All right, so I'm excited to try this out. It's the first time I've ever purchased a fruit from Vietnam, and I'm hoping it's gonna be a high quality dragon fruit. And you can see its import was Asian pride, it looks like it says, there you go. And it has some, I would assume, Vietnamese writing. Hope it wasn't upside down. And you could tell they used some sort of sealant on the tip. And there's not much of a stem there for grafting. Not that I don't think I'd want to graft this unless it tastes amazing. So let's see what it tastes like. All right. So it is a really pretty white. It's definitely not a ugly color at all or opaque. Um, I wouldn't say, I'd say Maria Rosa in our, my experience, it tasted pretty decent, but it was more white. So you could see some of the clearness over here, or opaqueness. That's probably what Paul Thompson was indicating. I'll zoom in for you. So see it's kind of opaque there. That could also be deterioration or bruising of the fruit as well. So I'm not sure what that is, but either way it's going to taste pretty good. Look at that. It's really pretty. Definitely beautiful. I kind of am biased and going to expect this to taste kind of bland, but I hope I'm wrong. So let's give it a shot. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So ants get away. Argentine ants are a bummer. There it is. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. It was definitely a big bite, sorry. But it is, it is under flavored compared to varieties that are grown locally. Um, it's mild, it's balanced. The seeds don't taste very um, earthy or anything. They're pleasant, mildly crunchy. And it's a decent fruit. I definitely would not buy this again. Absolutely not. And honestly, I can see why people shy away from purchasing dragon fruit a second time when you buy dragon fruit from Vietnam. They probably had to pick it way too early, it took forever to ship out, and it didn't get to develop its sugar content on the vine naturally. So man, I can definitely see why people don't buy a second dragon fruit after eating this. I can see why people say it's kind of gross or it tastes like nothing 
but it's a pretty fruit. I would give it about a five out of 10. And that's being fair. Man, the local dragon fruits in California taste at least, I don't know, five, six times better, in my humble opinion. So, wow, that's a bummer. I guess if you're in the need for a dragon fruit fix, you can buy a Vietnamese white dragon fruit. But again, find the local ones. There's, we just found some locally recently, and they're out there. So keep your eyes open or get a yellow Pelora. That's a better choice from Ecuador, the yellow skin one. Yeah, it's kind of disheartening, but it's not bad. It's just not, it's not a good representation of what dragon fruit tastes like. This is from Gray Martin's farm out in Rainbow. And I asked him on YouTube where I could find such amazing fruit that he grows. And he told me, and I had three, and now I have one. So I wanted to just show you uh, what high quality uh, dragon fruit looks like. This is going to be a red fleshed. Um, I do not know the variety. I was hoping, I saw it. His recent one was called, uh, not Pride, not Glow. It was Praise, but it's it was more um, fuchsia inside than this one. So check this out. It's a beautiful fruit. And to me, it's the sweetest I've ever tasted. So it definitely looks similar to physical graffiti. The other ones I had were slightly more red. Maybe it's just the sunglasses. Yeah, the other ones I had were a little, I would say, more um, darker red than this variety. So this definitely looks a little different, but the outside looked pretty much the same. All right, so this would be very exciting. Just that. Nice big piece, very firm texture, everything about it looks amazing. Wow, this one's a little bit different than the other two that I've eaten, but this one is equally wonderful. Again, it's very sweet. Sweeter than, like, I would say, reminds me of a physical graffiti, but sweeter. And more, the, the seeds are very, they don't get that earthiness that some varieties of the reds do, or some of these hybrids. I would say that's kind of what makes these unique, is that the seeds are very inconspicuous. Like, some of the reds I've had where you actually bite into a seed and it's, it's very earthy. It can be a little unpleasant, but not these. Wow. Gray Martin. Excellent job. So there you go. I don't know the variety, but it's something that Gray Martin grew and probably hybridized and pollinated himself with a cross pollen. But wow. Amazing fruit. All right, there you go. That's it for today. Give us a like and a subscribe. We'll keep them coming. And try to find some high-quality dragon fruit in your area. All right, take care.